Good morning and good day to all audience and viewers from Masa University Facebook page and YouTube channel. Welcome to the webinar conducted by Faculty of Engineering, Build Environment and Information Technology of Masa University. My name is Siti Madiha. I will be serving you uh, as your moderator today. Today we will be hearing a presentation from IR Muhammad Razmi bin Razali. IR Muhammad Razmi Razali obtained his master in mechatronic engineering from the UTEM in 2016. His master research focused on torso talk algorithm development with inverse kinematic and zero moment point working pattern using NAO human robot. He acquired his professional engineer certificate of re registration from VEM in 2022. Currently, he works as a GRE in UTM, furthering his study in PhD of Electrical Engineering. His current research interest is in algorithm development for mobile robot motion control system and path bending algorithms. Without further ado, I would like to welcome I.R. Razmi Razali, who will be speaking to us with topic towards professional engineering engineer and sharing experience. All right, I Razmi, the floor is yours. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good evening. My name is Muhammad Razmi Bay Razali and I will uh, talk about my education, working experience, business experience and future plans. Okay, uh, the agenda for today uh, is talk, so it's about uh, a bit my background uh, and then second my qualif academic qualification and then uh, most of the content of my talks today will be my summary of employment experiences and uh, benefits of doing research and uh, the important thing of today talks is the route you choose to do the professional engineer and then uh, the benefits of earning a professional engineer license so uh, today this will be our agenda okay the background uh, of my uh, myself about me about, uh, a little bit my education my working experience and research experience and some of the future works I graduated from uh, University Technical Malaysia Melaka UTEM with a degree in mechatronics engineering in 2012. Then I continue my Master of Science in mechatronics engineering also from UTEM Melaka and graduated in 2016. I also completed my internship at JKR Electric Moa where I gained hands-on experience in my field of study and developed my technical skills. Since October 2021, I'm working as a graduate research assistant in UTM Skudai, furthering my study in PhD of Electrical Engineering. I pursued my undergraduate degree in Mechatronic Engineering at UTEM. During this time, I was exposed to many courses in the field which gave me a strong foundation of knowledge and skills. After finishing my undergraduate degree, I decided to continue my education by pursuing a master's degree in mechatronics engineering at UTEM. The program was rigorous, but it gave me the opportunity to specialize in a particular area of my interest within the field of humanoid robot. I also had the chance to work as research assistant, which allowed me to gain hands-on experience in the field of trajectory zero moment point and inverse kinematics. So uh, uh, this is my a master research uh, slides. So I will uh, discuss a bit uh, about my experience uh, becoming a uh, research assistant at UTEM Melaka. So the, the title of my research is about the model and validation of swaying arm to the torso top of human robot during walking. So the project objective of my uh, research is de to develop the torso top tau t equation in order to model the talk at the torso of human robot in a vertical direction during walking. So uh, my my first objective is I want to de uh, develop uh, while the robot is walking, it swing its arm 
and then we need to investigate uh, the top uh, of at the torso of the robot uh, or we call as upper limbs motion of the robot while it's working. Then second, to monitor the performance of the diversified swing arm angle range with the torso top during humanoid robot working. So, and then second adjective, uh, I, I, <coughs> we want to monitor the performance of uh, multiple swing arm angle range while the robot uh, is working to investigate the top and also at the upper limbs of the robot's motion. So my contribution of research is a new model that describes the influence of the talk about torso in the vertical axis during one-wide robot working. And then new approach of swing, swing arm motion is proposed to influence the torso talk during working. So my main contribution is uh, to uh, model the uh, equation of, about the torso talk of the robot while it's swaying its arm and then the second is the approach of swaying arm motion uh, for the robot during walking so uh, the basic things of my research is the uh, the trajectory generation of human robot walking so the method that, that i use uh, in this research is uh, quite uh, simple which i use the toast the, the top at the four main joints of the robot. Uh, the first joint is right, sh right shoulder joint, left shoulder joint, right hip joint, and left hip joint. So uh, the equation that I developed uh, to monitor or to investigate the torso top of the robot is by summation of right shoulder top and left shoulder top, and then minus with the right hip top and left hip top. So by using this formula, uh, the robot uh, or the researcher or the operator that use the robot can investigate the uh, the top at the torso of the robot. So, and then the second methodology is this is the uh, the side the side view of the robot. Uh, for the force component that I use uh, to investigate uh, the force that will uh, uh, that will pro provided by the robot while it's swaying its arm. So uh, the method is quite simple. So the method is like a static and dynamics uh, uh, knowledge that we learn in undergraduate. So uh, the force component we need to investigate because while the robot is working, the robot tends to uh, slide to the left and slide to the right while it's working. So, and then this is the uh, simulation of the robot. Uh, can you play? So this is the simulation of the robot, but uh, can you play with it, uh, Madam Madiha? Cannot play. So this is the simulation result uh, for the first uh, best uh, swing arm um, range, which is 36 degree. And then this is the result, the second best of the swing arm um, uh, uh, range, about 48 degree. Then this is the experiment result that, uh, that I uh, do the experiment using now human weight robot. So the robot move in uh, uh, more, uh, a, little bit, a little bit more one meter uh, robot work using the swing arm motion at 36 degree. So same goes to the next result. So this is the second best result, which is 48 degree. So, and then I continue my uh, experience, my career experience at Venture Telecom Systems in Berhad as a test engineer. After graduating, I began my professional career at Venture Telecom Systems in Berhad, where I work as a test engineer. For those who, for those of you who may not be familiar with the role, a test engineer is responsible for testing and evaluating products to ensure they meet quality standards and perform as intended. I began my career as a test engineer at Venture Telecom Systems in Berhad, where I was part of a team 
that develop and tested electronic products for the semiconductor industry. My main responsibilities included designing test plans, executing tests, and analyzing test data to identify issues and propose solution. So uh, the summary of my employment experience. In this role, I was responsible for portable printer, and I was able to debug failure bots, test it down, monitoring, and troubleshooting. I also eligible to provide technical solution and test solution if required. I also had the opportunity to collaborate with colleagues on terminal, vehicle mount, and desktop printer, which taught me the importance of communication and teamwork in the workplace. One of the biggest challenges I faced in this role was developing effective test plans that could accurately capture the functionality and performance of complex electronic systems. To address this challenge, I work closely with the design and development teams to gain a deep understanding of the products and their intended users. This allowed me to identify critical test cases and develop comprehensive test plans that could cover all possible scenarios. So uh, my employment experience summary, Adventure Telecom Systems Cyberdat, I was responsible for the PCBA testing, including ICT yield and FCT yield. FCT yield means uh, the yield for the PCB bots and FCT yield is the yield for units. And then I was responsible on debugging failure bots, test the down, monitoring and troubleshooting. And then uh, another one is eligible, eligible to provide technical solution and test solution if required. Another important aspect of my role was identifying and analyzing defects in products. I use a variety of tools and techniques such as root cause analysis and statist statistical analysis to determine the underlying causes of defects and propose solutions to mitigate them. I also work closely with the engineering team such as process engineer, senior engineer, principal engineer and engineering manager to ensure that the proposed solutions were implemented correctly and effectively. So uh, the job description as a test engineer uh, in my uh, work experience is I need to troubleshoot the product testing issue through detailed investigation and experiment. So when we have an issue uh, in a unit or multiple unit at the same time, we need to troubleshoot uh, uh, the, the root cause error that happened to the unit so that our production line can move, uh, can work in smooth condition. Uh, so the production, the production line uh, will not be stopped. And then the second is I'm ensure the test program up and running flawlessly at production line and provide the necessary documentation to the customer. <clears throat> the printer is designed to be lightweight and compact making it easy to carry with you on the go while still providing high quality printing capabilities. One of the key design challenges we faced in developing this printer was creating a compact form factor while still maintaining high quality printing capabilities. To achieve this, we work closely with our engineering team to develop a new printing mechanism that could be miniaturized without sacrificing the print quality. So uh, in the next few slides, I will show you uh, the, the product that we produce in our building during uh, my time work experience. So the responsibility as a test engineer, I need to ensure the product released by the company complies or adhere the standard quality required by the customer and also our standard uh, quality. So we have two type of standard quality, which is internal and external. Then second is response to any testing issue from customer and feed forward to management on the details issue, initial finding and contamination offer. So when we have a testing issue, uh, we need to uh, sort it out. So we need to uh, figure out in, in a short time period so that uh, all, all the products can produce in high quality. So this is the list of products that produce in our building. So this is uh, PB50. So uh, the portable printer, uh, if uh, you can see also uh, around you, uh, let's say like uh, our Royal Malaysian Police or our 
uh, water supply agency or our uh, our uh, electrical seat can be a uh, meter reader so you if you can see that they bring together uh, a, a, a compact printer that uh, can print the receipt uh, for your bills or for your uh, road summon also uh, that small printer we call as portable printer so uh, the agencies uh, can print your receipt uh, on that side mean on that time so we don't wait we don't wait any for three days to have that receipt <clears throat> so and then this is a uh, Renault so this is uh, another compact uh, portable printer and then this is a PB22 or we call as Lido and Roach. This is also another type of uh, portable printer. <coughs> so uh, these products uh, also uh, included with Wi-Fi technology, Bluetooth and NFC. So uh, it, it, we can call it, we, call, we can call this portable printer as uh, all-in-one printer. So uh, they can bring uh, outside from the our building if we want to have if we have some uh, uh, paper to print. <coughs> Another challenge uh, was ensuring that the printer was easy to use and could connect with a wide range of devices. To address this, we designed a printer with a simple interface that could be operated via Wi-Fi. Bluetooth as well as through traditional USB connections. Our team is really proud of what we have achieved with this portable printer. We believe that it is, uh, we believe that it has the potential to revolutionize the way people print and work on the go. And we are excited to see how it will be used by professionals, enforcer and industry. Throughout my career as a test engineer, I have been able to develop many skills including problem solving, critical thinking, and communication. These skills has, have been essential in my ability to identify and address quality issues, work effectively with cross-functional teams, and contribute to the overall success of the project I have worked on. So uh, while it, uh, in summary, when I was an engineer, uh, you need uh, to have skills, critical skills, critical thinking that you need to uh, solve an issue in a short time of period. So, because we cannot uh, solve the issue in longer period because it will it will cost the company uh, some financial loss lah. So, uh, if we delay to troubleshoot the issue at our building. So this is another product. So we call as this vehicle mount. This is the biggest product that produced in our building. So, and then this product also uh, require lots of uh, technical abilities that we need to uh, produce this product. And then this is the view of our production line. So if you can see here, this is our operator. And then uh, in front of the operator, uh, there, there is a computer to test the unit. Uh, every time uh, they they are already finished assembled. So if you can see here, uh, the software that used by the operator and by the uh, by the operator to test the unit, uh, they use uh, LabVIEW, a uh, software that uh, capable to uh, to test the unit uh, in a very efficient way. So uh, what I what I learned in my uh, industrial experience is the lab view is the most common software uh, that used in our building. So I propose to our students that to learn lab view will be a big advantage to them because it is a common thing in industry. So if you can see here, there is a lot. Uh, there is also a power supply to test the uh, unit uh, power during test. So, and then this is the other side of view of the operator doing the test. So this test, uh, this station called as test station, 
or functional station. So uh, this is where the unit uh, that already finished assemble will be tested by the operator. And then this is another side. So you, if you can see the operator uh, doing this uh, in very, very fast lah, because uh, every unit needs to, to, need to need to be settled about six minutes. So every time he, she doing the testing, she need to uh, ensure that the unit pass uh, before six minutes. Okay. And then, and then this is uh, the view of half of our production line. So if you can see here, there's uh, multiple, uh, oh, a multiple station we call, we call a station. And then uh, most of the station in our production line are a process station. Means they uh, assemble parts at every station. So this, this station only assemble uh, uh, bracket. Okay, and then this station assemble uh, printing head, and then this station assemble uh, panel. So every station has their own dedicated uh, process to do. So if you can see here, there's a lot of operator in our uh, production line. And then this is another uh, side of view of our uh, station. So you can see here, this uh, station also uh, using a uh, top driver. And then the, this top driver is uh, already calibrated by our technician uh, by the specific top that need to uh, assemble the unit. So the the top driver is not uh, is not a simple top driver, but the or the uh, the top driver will be uh, monitored or maintained by the technician so that it will produce uh, um, optimum top while assemble the unit so this is the our test station so uh, our test station consists of six station but uh, each station consists of two computers so the operator needs to test two units at the same time so because uh, the reason why we are doing this uh, method we need to produce uh, output uh, as much as we can. So by uh, increase the use of uh, computer, or we call as test station, the test will be completed uh, with, before six minutes with two units. So uh, in six minutes, the unit tests two units, and then if we have six station, the units will be produced 12 before six minutes. So uh, it will increase our output, uh, our daily output if uh, we're doing this method. So this is my uh, our office view. So you can see here, uh, uh, this is the engineering uh, department office. Lab. So we also have our own office so that we can uh, communicate with the uh, our supplier communicate with our customer uh, about our issue in the uh, build our building. And then this is uh, our, when, when you have uh, Deepa Bali celebration. So uh, you can see uh, uh, we receive uh, Duit Raya during that uh, celebration. And then this is one issue that I faced during my experience at Venture Telecom Systems in Berhad. Uh, this unit uh, uh, feedback by the customer, they cannot print uh, horizontally. Uh, so, so with uh, the customer feedback to us, so we need to troubleshoot. And then what we discovered that uh, it, it is true, the printer cannot print horizontally. It only prints vertically. Uh, the reason why uh, Customer feedback to us, they cannot print with horizontally because the label uh, for this printer, it need to be print horizontally. But uh, it turns out that the print the printer prints vertically. So we troubleshoot, then we discuss with our senior engineer and we discuss with our principal engineer and engineering manager. So we we discover that uh, the flashing software that 
uh, flash in this printer uh, is uh, different from our flashing software. So uh, that is uh, our troubleshoot uh, root cause uh, discovered at that time. So uh, this is my summary of employment experience at Masa University. After my time at Venture Telecom System Samberhat for about three years, I pursued research opportunities in Masa University as an engineering lecturer. As a lecturer, my main role was to teach and guide students in the field of engineering, as well as conduct research in my area of expertise. I was involved in humanoid robot working research, which focused on regeneration algorithm using cubic polynomial and inverse kinematics. Through this experience, for about two and a half years, I developed my analytical and critical thinking skills, and I learned how to approach complex problems in a systematic way. So my experience in Mass Time City, I was assigned uh, at Faculty of Engineering and Good Environment for about two and a half years as lecturer under Electrical and Electronics Department and reporting to Dr. Iman, our faculty dean. Uh, my responsible in teaching and learning, preparing lab sheets, uh, exam papers, uh, university industry collaboration activities, and new laboratory development. And then I was promoted uh, to become a research fellow on March 2021 and responsible to research activity in the faculty. And then uh, I, I also participated in various academic internal and external programs for the faculty. Okay, this is a uh, uh, Massa University organization chart a uh, few years back. So uh, I was uh, under the Department of Electrical and Electronic uh, Engineering uh, with our program coordinator, Dr. Nunabila, and reporting to the Dr. Iman as our faculty dean. One of the key challenges I faced in this role was ensuring that I could effectively communicate complex engineering concepts to students and varying backgrounds and skill levels. To address this challenge, I use a variety of teaching methods and tools such as hands-on demonstrations, visual aids, and case studies. I also encourage open communication and collaboration in the classroom, which help foster an environment of active learning and engagement. So uh, this is one of the, my uh, achievement with the uh, help from our faculty and our university uh, as I join or participate in uh, competition at uh, Polytechnic in, in Kedah. And then I was promoted uh, to become a research fellow in March 2021. And uh, I have the opportunity to become uh, staff at PBB uh, Masa University. So, and then uh, one of the most, uh, in addition to teaching, I also conducted research in the area of human robot working. This involved working on a range of projects from basic research to more applied projects that could have real world impact. Through my research, I was able to stay up to date with the latest trends and developments in the field engineering, which allowed me to bring new insights and perspective to my teaching. So uh, another uh, achievement uh, while I working as lecturer at Masa University, uh, I conduct a few uh, webinar about Arduino workshop uh, for uh, Department of Electrical Engineering and especially for our faculty uh, engineering. And then uh, this is one uh, another achievement in my faculty. You know, while I working as lecturer, I. Uh, successfully published uh, a few papers uh, at conference. <clears throat> One of the most rewarding aspects of my role as engineering lecturer was seeing my students succeed and make meaningful contribution to the field, whether it was through their academic achievements on, or their own research projects. It was always inspiring to see the impact that they could have. So uh, it is my pleasure while working as a lecturer that uh, we can see the student progression uh, with their uh, achievement after they graduated. So, and then this is the summary of 
uh, we I made uh, an MOU with IC Electronics in Amber Hat so that uh, we can we can have engagement with the industry from our faculty. Throughout my career as engineering lecturer, I have developed a range of skills such as communication, critical thinking, and problem solving. These skills have been essential in my ability to teach and guide students, as well as conduct impactful research that contributes to the field of engineering. So while working uh, as a lecturer, uh, it, is, it is a great pleasure and great experience uh, with the, uh, our colleagues in Faculty of Engineering uh that we strive together to become uh, the best uh department in that faculty so uh next the 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 benefit of doing research we can say that research is a vital part of advancing knowledge driving innovation and finding solutions to the many challenges facing our world today one of the key benefits of doing research is that it allows us to expand our understanding of the world around us, whether it's in the natural sciences, social sciences, or humanities. Research provides us with the opportunity to explore new ideas, discover new insights, and gain a deeper understanding of the complex issues that we face. Research also provides us with the tools and knowledge to tackle real world problems and challenges. By conducting research, we can identify innovative solutions to problems in a wide range of areas, from healthcare and, and environmental issues to social and economic challenges. Another benefit of doing research is that it helps us develop critical thinking and problem solving skills. Research requires us to approach problems and challenges with a curious and analytical mindset as well as to develop creative and innovative solutions. Research also provides numerous opportunities for professional and personal growth. It can lead to the, to the, to the de development of new skills such as data analysis, technical writing and project management, and can provide opportunities for networking and collaboration with colleagues and experts in the field. In addition, research can have a profound impact on society contributing to investment in science, technology, and policy. Research can lead to new medical treatments, improved environmental protections, and more effective policies and programs that benefit communities and society as a whole. Overall, uh, research is essential to the advancement of knowledge and to solving some of the most pressing challenges facing our world today, whether you are a researcher, a student, or a member of the public. The benefit of research are numerous and far reaching. So uh, we hope that I hope that uh, uh, with my experience as a uh, lecturer at Masam City can give uh, some advantage to me to further uh, doing research in the next future. So and then this is the main content of our talk today. Uh, how to do the professional engineering certificates. Uh, before I start to uh, discuss with you uh, how to do the certificates, uh, I'm not a certified uh, IEM trainer to, uh, to, to discuss about how to do the PE, but uh, the, uh, what I will discuss with you today is only the general things that uh, we know how to do the professional engineer. And the general things means um, the common uh, common assessment and common uh, things that we do to do the professional engineer. <clears throat> okay, uh, initially, after you graduate, uh, uh, especially engineering, uh, after you graduate in engineering, uh, you should uh, register first with IEM and BEM. So, uh, after you register both of these agencies, IEMBM, so you will become a graduate engineer. So with that graduate engineer, you are uh, allowed to work as an engineer. So during your working experience for three years as an engineer, uh, three years or more, lah, you can uh, applicable or you can submit your report 
to the IEM to have a professional assessment. And after that, uh, you can have your interview. So in that three years or more, uh, you need to log up. Uh, you need to do your logbook uh, for that three years uh, so that uh, you have some uh, content or you have uh, information during your working experience as an engineer. So after three years or more, you can sit for your professional assessment interview. After that, if you pass the assessment interview, you uh, qualify uh, as a professional engineer. So you can get your certificate. And if you want to further or you can want to improve your certificate to do the uh, PEPC, we call it PEPC, which is professional engineer with practicing certificate, uh, you need to sit with the uh, professional competency examination. After uh, a year, you become a professional engineer. So uh, this is the route that uh, I choose. Uh, uh, this is the common things to do the uh, professional engineer. So uh, the next thing is, uh, this is another view. If you want to do the professional engineer, uh, you need to make sure that your engineering degree is accredited by BEM, uh, CIRIM and MQA or others lah if you have any accreditation method. So you, you need to uh, uh, to make sure your engineering degree is accredited. Then you register with BEM and IEM as a graduate member. And then the training requirement that you need to do, you, you need to work minimum three years. Uh, at the relevant work experiences means like you become engineer lah. Sir, uh, Ar Arazmi. Yes. Um, internet not stable. <laughs> okay, you can proceed. Yes, yeah. Okay. So in in training requirement, uh, you need to have minimum three years working as an engineer. So uh, in that three years or more, you need to do your logbook. So you uh, you need to write up uh, whatever you doing as an engineer means whatever you work as an engineer, you need to write in the logbook and then you need to uh, compile of the logbook for about three years, okay, three years or more. Then after you uh, compile all of that for three years, you can submit to the IEM, then uh, the committee of the IM can decide uh, it, 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 uh, it is you are qualified to have uh, interview or professional exam. So if uh, they you, are, you still if they decided you are still not qualified to have the professional interview, you need to do uh, and I, uh, so you need to make sure that the committee is uh, approve your application. Then. After you pass, you are qualified as a IEM corporate member. So until that uh, time, until that uh, level. So after you uh, re re receive the certificate of professional engineer for about one year, you can sit to the competency examination with the BM if you want to further your certificate to have the PEPC. So this is the uh, Board of Engineer uh, route if you want to do the uh, PE. So you have route A, route B, and route C. So in my experience, I using uh, route C. So this is a uh, corporate member of IEM. So I'm going through all the assessment, all the endorsement, all the uh, interview by IEM. Okay, uh, this is one of the prerequisite. Uh, if you follow through route A and route C. Okay, uh, you need minimum three years registration with Board of Engineer Malaysia as a graduate member, uh, as a graduate engineer. So, uh, that's, uh, that's why uh, after you graduate, after you graduated, Please make sure you register with the BM 
and also IEM. So because it needs three years uh, to hold that graduate, graduate engineer title before you can do your professional engineer. Okay. And then after you are a great graduate engineer for three years, uh, minimum also three years, relevant engineering working experience with at least one year in, in Malaysia under supervision of the profession, professional engineer it registered in the same branch of engineering discipline. Okay. So, uh, so it takes times for you to do the PE because you need to hold the graduate engineer title for about three years and then another three years you need to log up your uh, logbook. So uh, it, it is already taken six years before you can uh, qualify for the professional interview. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, uh, the ECD program by the IEM, uh, there are a few uh, uh, bigger picture lah you need to do. First, you need to do the logbook. Then you need to register as the mentee. Then you need to choose your mentor. And then your logbook after, after endorsed by mentor, you also need to submit to the committee member so that uh, they can decide you are uh, qualified to have interview or to have examination. So in the big picture, uh, initially, firstly, you need to register as mentee. Okay. Then uh, you need to choose a mentor. Means a mentor is qualified professional engineer. Lah. So uh, register first as a mentee. Then uh, you need to have quarterly meeting, report to your mentor, and they they will review your reports. Quarterly meeting, eh? So because uh, every three months, uh, you need to have an appointment with your mentor. As my experience, appointment your mentor, and then they review your logbook after uh, he already reviewed and they decided that your uh, your logbook is complete so they will uh, sign your uh, your he will endorse your report then uh, you need to submit to a committee uh, annually so every annually one year in three years you need to submit your report uh, to IEM because they need to review your report and then uh, they will endorse your report and if you are qualified to have professional interview they will uh, de uh, decide to uh, call you or they will email to you and then in your professional interview uh, do you also need to do the technical report okay technical report and then uh, in that technical report the content will be your training and experience report so uh, your professional interview also will be based on that report. Okay. Okay. Uh, the details, uh, if you want uh, to do the professional engineer, is already uh, in IEM website. So if you lo uh, log in to the IEM website, you can find all the details that you need uh, to do as a professional engineer. If you can see here, you can uh, get mentor list. Okay, if you can see here, uh, you can select or you can choose your mentor with your discipline. If you are civil, you are civil. If you are electric, electronic, you are electronic. You need to find a mentor that same discipline as yours. Then uh, in that website also, you you can. Uh, register as mentee and then you can register as mentor the document is already there so you just need to download and fill up and then the logbook okay uh, you can if you can see in the slide there is also a log file a document that you can download and then you can fill up 
the document. Uh, for the document, uh, how to fill up the document, uh, I suggest you to uh, join uh, training by IEM. So every month they have their own training, how to fill up the document. Okay, it is a uh, very, it's a lot of document that you need to uh, fill up. Okay. Okay, the benefits of doing professional engineer or IR. Engineers are critical to development and growth of society and becoming professional engineer can open up many opportunities for personal and professional growth. One of the key benefits of becoming a professional engineer is the opportunity to work on projects that have a tangible impact on society. As an engineer, you can work on projects that improve infrastructure, create new technologies and advance knowledge in a range of fields. Becoming a professional engineer also provides you with the opportunity to develop specialized technical skills that, that are highly valued in many industries. These skills can be used to solve complex problems and challenges and can lead to opportunities for career investment and growth. Another benefit of becoming a professional engineer is the opportunity to work with the diverse range of professionals, including architects, scientists, and other engineers. This collaboration can lead to new ideas, innovative solutions, and the development of new skills and knowledge. Becoming a professional engineer also provides you with a level of recognition and prestige within the industry Professional engineers are highly respected and valued for their knowledge, skills, and contribution to the field. In addition, becoming a professional engineer often leads to better job opportunities, higher salaries, and increased job security. Many industries rely heavily on engineers, and as a result, there is often a high demand for engineering professionals. Finally, becoming a professional engineer provides you with the opportunity to give back to society by using your skills and expertise to solve real-world problems and challenges. As an engineer, you can make a difference in the world and contribute to a better future for us all. In summary, becoming a professional engineer provides many benefits from the opportunity to work on impactful projects and develop specialized skills to the potential for your career investment and job security. If you're interested in pursuing a career engineering, becoming a professional engineer can be highly rewarding and fulfilling path. So another the benefit uh, as as we uh, as we show right here in our slide, uh, benefits of earning professional engineer license is firstly is the prestige. Your standing as after receiving a PE can position you for success both now and in the future. PEs frequently receive more respect from the general population since they are licensed professionals and among the engineering world, which is where PE status is best understood, people who possess one are held in high regard. And second, investment in a career. Having a P license may be a determining factor when making a hiring decision. The hiring manager is more likely to select the licensed applicant when picking between two equally competent candidates when the only distinction is one has a PE license and the other does not. Obtaining a license not only improves your position but also emphasizes your capacity for leadership and shows a greater dedication to your profession. And then third, a higher wage. A PE's typical income is about 3,870 ringgit for lowest average to 9,300, the highest average. This is the monthly average salary, including lodging, transportation, and other benefits. Fourth, authority. A PE is frequently needed for engineers in order to grow and assume more responsibilities. Only a licensed engineer is qualified to oversee work in the private sector, sign, seal, and submit plans and drawings, and act as a fully qualified expert witness 
numerous governmental organizations and academic institutions stress the value of a PE license. And fifth, title. You cannot formally refer to oneself as a professional engineer without holding a PE license. In addition, you will need to register as a PE if you ever wish to operate as a consultant for yourself. And finally, adaptability and safety. Having a PE license might increase job security in times of outsourcing or industry downsizing. By allowing you to launch your own firm, you can also increase the range of professional alternatives you have outside of the conventional corporate setting. A PE license is necessary to work as an engineer engineering. So this is uh, six benefits uh, that uh, I list uh, if you earn a professional engineering license. So this is my uh, professional certificate. So after you are uh, finish your fin uh, interview and then your exam, then uh, you need to wait a couple of months uh, to have a certificate from Board of Engineers Malaysia. So uh, having this certificate uh, means you are a qualified uh, professional engineer. Okay. I think that's all, Madam Madiha. You have any? You have any question? Okay, Raz. Uh, I will. Like, I will have question. Okay, if you want to apply professional engineering, is it we need to pay uh, to IEM? Ke? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the renewal fee, renewal uh, fee uh, for graduate engineer, graduate engineer mm -hmm. is about one hundred seventy ringgit annually per year. Annually or per year? Uh, and per year, not per month, per year. Is it we still need to uh, what do report every every year and send to IEM? Ah uh, yeah, you need to submit your logbook that you mm -hmm. compile to IEM uh, annually. Okay. Uh, so it required hard to get uh, a PE because uh, uh, your report needs to be uh, distinctive. So you need to have mm -hmm. a quite good report about your working experience then you can submit to the IEM, the endorse. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all from me now. Okay, thank you for your clear explanation and sharing about your research, your working experience, and also uh, explain about the procedure, okay, how to apply professional engineering. Okay, thank you, IR Razmi, for your addressing and interesting topic, okay, and sharing session today. So, hopefully, the presentation was beneficial for everyone. And on behalf of Masai Musti, we would like to thank you for joining us today. Okay, thank you for your time and cooperation. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Okay. All right, okay, thank you.